What's going on? This is Andy Francis, and I tried telling you, I tried telling you that I was softening up the body on Thursday. On Monday, we were going two for three, two for three, three for five, and now we cracked them for a four for five. We had a great Sunday. The Jaguars did us well. We hit the Darrell Henderson touchdown, the over on the Jeff Wilson rushing yards and the attempts, and then also the second half of the Cincinnati Bengals game. We sniffed out that they were going to have a miserable first half. And the only one that we missed were the Steelers. But you know what? I don't want to be going 5-0. Because then too many people are going to be watching me. And I don't want that. You know, it's like when you're playing roulette or something. You're on a great red streak. And then you're doing $200 a hand. Some guy comes in and just adds $5 to your spin. Throws off all the juju. So, you know, we're, this is stays between me and you. All the odd shopper people. If you're not an odd shopper person, it's very simple subscribe to the channel you can click the button right there and you can click a like on this video and then we'll get into some of my picks for this random weird double monday night week two but not like a seven and a ten a seven and an eight thirty all weird stuff except for my bets those are going to be the least weird thing about this monday night now you can still take advantage of the betmgm promo that they have going on right now where if you're a new user and you bet $10 on any one of these teams tonight to win, and either team in that game scores a touchdown, BetMGM is going to credit you with $200 in free bets. So you take these free bets, you bet them on something, and the winnings you keep for yourself. Fair enough. So into these uh, two Monday night games, we got the, uh, the Bills hosting the Tennessee Titans, and then we also have the Vikings going to Philadelphia for their home opener at 8-15. And the first one I'm going to go with, it's a its a pretty standard bet. We're going to go by the spread on this one. I'm taking the Philadelphia Eagles minus 2.5 against the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, if there's one reason you need to know, it would be that Kirk Cousins during prime time, you can look up his history. I think last year, the most recent time we saw him, uh, he was losing to Cooper Rush, but then again, I guess Joe Burrow just did as well. So I don't know. Maybe there's a little more than meets the eye on that one. But Kirk Cousins on the road, prime time, has an awful record. And if there's one place that could make life bad for you, it's Philadelphia. Just go ask Santa Claus. They threw beer bottles at his head. What do you think they'll do to Kirk Cousins? You know, he, one o'clock, four o'clock, is usually when he plays his best games at home, but that's not where he's going to be. Very hostile environment on the road in Philadelphia. I like Philadelphia in this one. And, you know, A.J. Brown seemed to really open up the whole offense for everybody else. So now you got Devontae Smith as the clear two. Goddard as the tight end. The running backs all scored a touchdown. Hurts is that dual threat. Should set up for a good environment for that team, using the crowd to fuel that running game and maybe amp up the defense a little further because I know... Detroit really did a number on him, but I'm looking for the Philadelphia Eagles to have a nice opening game and win that one. I'm taking them minus two and a half. And the other game's a little trickier. I don't like taking teams with huge spreads. You got the Bills hosting the Titans. They're like 10 point favorites or something like that. You'll never see me take a 10 point favorite ever. So I'm actually going to go into the props for this one. Now the Bills, when we saw them opening night 10 years ago, it feels like they haven't played in that long. They looked like the Bills that people thought they would look like. They looked like the Super Bowl champions. They were scoring nearly at will against the defending Super Bowl champs in their building with Aaron Donald, with Jalen Ramsey. It was extremely impressive. So if they're going to continue that at home, which you would think they would with the extra rest, not even extra rest, extra, extra rest. They played on opening Thursday and then the following Monday, you think they're going to be prepared and well-rested for this game which means as 10-point favorites, they'll probably be up at some point in this game, which means the Titans will be trailing, which means there has to be throwing. If you're down 10, you're more likely to be pass-heavy in the game script. And if you're going to put Ryan Tannehill's passing yardage at like 219 and a half, I'm going to have to take the over on that. We've seen Ryan Tannehill rise to the occasion when he plays better offenses. I mean, he obviously has minimal weapons these days. But he always seems to get the most out of these random running backs and tight ends and fill-in receivers. And I would look to him to surpass 219 and a half. I think that's a reasonable ask. It's like you could have a someone, if he threw for 230, we'd be like, oh, that was a bad game. And still we would hit our bet if he did that. So I'm taking the over 219 and a half for Ryan Tannehill. Then I'm looking at old Derrick Henry. You know, he got injured last year. 
I've never liked him in the beginning of the year when defenses are fresh. I've always thought when defenses are fresh and they're not banged up, they're able to stop one of those big body guys. But then come January, it's week 16, 17, 18, you're cold, you're hurt. Now that you got this huge guy running downhill at you, but early in the year, I'm always scared to take those overs on Henry rushing props. However, Since the Titans have minimal weapons these days, as I mentioned, I'm going to take the over 11 and a half receiving yards for Derrick Henry. We've seen the last two seasons. They've actually been willing to work him into the passing game. They've run a couple design screens with him every single game. We even saw him last year take one of those screens versus the Bills for like 50 yards or something like that. We'll get like two to three shots at it. And if he can just break one or two tackles, we can hit that over 11 and a half receiving yards. And not to mention... We've hit every single running back receiving prop we've had to this point, so we're going to be looking to add to that. So those are the three I got for you. The uh, Philadelphia Eagles minus 2.5, the over 219.5 passing yards for Ryan Tannehill, and the over 11.5 receiving yards for Derrick Henry on the random weird double Monday night football. All right, everyone, good luck to you. Better luck to me. Hey, I don't know what you, you think I care about you having a better night than me. I don't. But I can still give you this, these picks for you to use. I will, I will see you guys on Thursday before the Thursday night game for a couple of picks then. Do me a favor as always. Toss a like on this video. Subscribe to the Odd Shopper channel so you're not one of those random people joining the roulette wheel late. And I will talk to you later. See ya.